Welcome back everybody. So the subject of today's video is going to be alternators. Um, I thought I'd spend a few minutes here talking about the failure modes of alternators, what happens to them, why they stop working, and uh, talk a little bit about how they work. Because if you know how something works, it's a lot easier to figure out why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So first step for me, I got to pull the alternator off this focus. So I'll do that real quick. First step is disconnecting the battery. I've already done that. There's usually two connections on an alternator. There's usually a big fat wire that we call the B plus wire and then a smaller plug that plugs in. So alternators are actually pretty simple devices. Let's get this one apart and then I'll go over the individual pieces. So here's the two connections I was talking about. This is the big fat wire that goes straight to the positive post of the battery. And then this is the smaller connection. You can see there's one, two, three wires in there. We'll talk about this one a little bit more as we go along. Before I go any further, this is the problem with this alternator. You can see there's quite a bit of play back here. So this bearing failed and it grabbed the inside of this housing and spun that out and it's very loose. So the, the shaft that runs through the alternator and that's called the rotor is very loose. It actually still charged, which is kind of amazing. It was still charging but it was making a tremendous amount of noise. Ordinarily, I wouldn't be taking this apart, even though alternators can rebuild. After all, I'm going to be installing this remanufactured unit on there, but there is no core charge on this remanufactured unit, so I can take this apart and I'm kind of show what's going on in here. So once we get this back plate off, kind of get a better look at that bearing. And this right here, I believe is our diode pack. And this is our voltage regulator here. And this is held on with some torque screws. So there will be some brushes under here. We'll try and hold them in. So you can see we have two brushes in there. And we'll set that aside for now. And now let's see if I can get this thing apart. It should come apart right in the middle. OK. 
Okay, so we're going to have, this is our diode pack right here. I'm going to have to cut those in order to get this apart, so I'm going to snip it. Ordinarily, I would unsolder these if I were intending on rebuilding it. This is just a dissection to find out what went wrong. So this is our diode pack here. Now we're down to the bits and bobs. So we'll start out with this big shaft that runs through the center of the alternator. This is called the rotor. And the rotor is where the brushes contact the regulator. So the regulator brushes make, make contact with the rotor. And what's going on here is the regulator is varying the amount of current that gets into the rotor. And the rotor is just a big electromagnet. So this in itself is not magnetic, but when you apply voltage, DC voltage, to these two commentators, then this becomes a magnet. The regulator's job is to vary the amount of current to vary how strong this magnet is. So this is a variable strength magnet and it's controlled by the regulator. And then this part of it, this is called the stator. And stator by the name, something in stasis or static is not moving. And that's exactly what's happening here. This is just three separate windings of wire that don't move, but the rotor spins inside of the stator and because we're turning that big rotor into a magnet the magnet as it spins inside the stator is creating voltage now it's actually ac voltage that's being created and we can control how much voltage is being created by how much current we put into the rotor via the regulator so the regulator's job is to regulate the amount of voltage coming out of the alternator. And all it does is vary the current so that the voltage coming out is at its specification or what it wants, which is typically somewhere around 14, 14 and a half volts. And that's basically all there is to it. The diode pack basically turns that AC into DC. So these are big power diodes. And they only allow current to flow in one direction, out of the alternator. So we're taking that AC waveform, which is positive voltage, negative voltage, positive voltage, negative voltage, and we're chopping the bottom off of it. So we're only letting the positive voltage out of the alternator. The diodes only allow current flow in one direction. They block the negative polarized current so that it doesn't flow. And they also block current coming from the battery back into the alternator. So current is only allowed to flow out of the alternator and that's accomplished by the diode pack. There's six diodes, six big power diodes in this, in this diode pack that accomplish that function. And that's their sole job. So the reason I mention that is because if you ever have an alternator that's pulling current with the key off, and no voltage going to this field. So key off, no voltage going to the field, and it's still drawing current, then this is bad. One of these diodes is shorted, and that's what's causing current to flow into the alternator when it's not supposed to. Now, let's talk a little bit about bearings and bushings, because that's what failed with this one. So this one lost a, lost a bushing in the housing completely gone and it was flopping around and that's what I'm replacing this one for because it was making a racket. So that's one failure mode is you lose a bushing or a bearing in the alternator. So here's the front one. It's okay. The front one is fine but the rear one looks like this part of the bushing in the housing is gone so it was flopping around in there pretty bad. 
But other things, other things can happen to alternators. So this is how the current gets out of the alternator through that big fat wire. This is the wire that's not supposed to draw current with the key off. If there's no voltage going into the regulator to field the rotor, then there should be no current coming out of this thing or going into it. So key off, there's no power going to the voltage regulator. There's no current going through the rotor. There should be no power going in or out. It should be in stasis. There should be nothing happening. So if you have a, a mysterious battery draw and you disconnect the alternator and it goes away with the key off, then the diode pack inside the alternator is bad. The voltage regulator, in older cars it's a simple device that just regulates to a fixed voltage. Um, on most of the Fords that I've seen that's about 14.5 volts, 14.4 volts, 14.6 volts, something like that. On something more modern, what you can find is this can be a little bit more sophisticated and it can be controlled by the computer that runs the engine. And the reason they're doing that is so that if you have something that has not a lot of under hood space where the battery is in a position where it gets very hot in summertime temperatures, we're calculating the battery temperature is this, therefore it's kind of hot, we don't want to boil off all the electrolyte, let's reduce the charging system voltage. And they'll drop it down from 14 volts down to 12.5 volts or 12.7 volts, especially after the car's been running for a while and they know that the battery is fully charged, they'll just drop the voltage down a little bit to save the battery. Uh, also, there could be a battery current sensor somewhere around the battery positive cable or negative cable. There could also be a battery temperature sensor that's close to the battery as well. And a temperature sensor input to the PCM, once the battery temperature starts to rise, the computer will drop the current on the field, let the charging system drop down to 12.5 volts, 12.7 volts to save the battery, make the battery last a little bit longer, especially after it's been running for 20 minutes or so. And we know that that big current surge to start the vehicle has been replenished and it doesn't need that 14 and a half volts anymore to charge it. It's already charged. So this is important because if you go to test something like a Honda and it's been running for 10 minutes in your stall and you put a voltmeter on it, it reads 12.7 volts. That doesn't mean the alternator is bad. It could mean that the PCM is dropping the charging system voltage down to save the battery. The correct approach to test that alternator would be to scan the vehicle, and I do mean vehicle, and see if there's any alternator related codes in that particular vehicle. So you scan the vehicle, if you have a charging system code, then you might look at the alternator. But even so, if an alternator is not charging, does that mean that the alternator is bad? Well, not necessarily. Remember, some of these modern vehicles have a PCM that's controlling the alternator. So what if that connection between the PCM and the alternator goes bad? Most of them have a backup where it'll just revert to a fixed voltage like the old style alternators and then they'll store a charging system code in the PCM to let you know that there's a problem. Some don't. So if you don't have an alternator that's charging, don't uh, immediately suspect that the, the alternator is bad. You might have to check the actual circuits coming out of the PCM going to the regulator to see if they are what they're supposed to be. And there's usually testing in factory manuals to accomplish just that. So that's about it for alternators. Hopefully that helps you to diagnose one when it stops working. Uh, one other thing you might want to be aware of is some of these newer alternators have a clutch on the input pulley so that when you snap the throttle wide open and then you let off of it, this rotor inside of this alternator has quite a bit of mass. So they want that to free spin. Why would you stop it dead with the serpentine belt when you let off the gas? If it free spins, it's still doing work. So it's just more efficient that way. So they'll put a one-way clutch in here so that it'll drive in one direction and then if you rev the thing up and let off the gas and the engine is coasting down this pulley won't be spinning but the inside shafts will be uh, spinning faster than the pulley because there's a one-way clutch allowing that to happen 
It's kind of like a ratcheting one-way clutch in a transmission. But um, those go bad. Those make noise and can cause problems. So something to be aware of. Okay, I'm going to put this back in my little focus here. Um, I know I don't have to do any testing on these circuits because it was already charging. It was just making noise. So I'll button this thing up and move on to the next problem on this car and see if I can get this thing on the road. Thanks for watching.